growing up, I, I went to a large high school that was a melting pot of four other neighborhoods, um, four other towns, and um, different socioeconomic people came together, and at some point, you felt, I felt uncomfortable, I felt, you know, targeted and picked on. Um, but, and it, it was difficult, it was hard. Um, thankfully, we weren't in the same classes, so it would be more in the common times during like lunch periods and that kind of thing after school and before school. And it required me to kind of change, my mom wasn't gonna change my school, so it required me to change my lifestyle. Was I going to hang out over, you know, where those kids were, or was I going to see, maybe, you know, just, stay and go study somewhere or you know seek other company and after a while I think ignoring them they really kind of faded in the background I remember seventh grade was very challenging um, in terms of just like working different people around and um, just kind of being targeted and picked on and it continued into like ninth grade but I think by the end of high school I became independent as you said and I you know they knew who I was I knew who they were but it, 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 there was a respect there, and I think that's one of the things people, when they go into gangs, is they want to be respected. So um, they will target you if you appear weak, but if you stand your ground and you are what you're about, and you're not afraid to be what you're there for, you're, I'm here to study, I'm here to get my work done, and you know you keep that attitude, eventually they're going to respect who you are and what you're about. and it's going to help you. I do think it's different now. I was doing a little bit of research before we got started because I remember reading a story not too long ago that just really struck me. It was um, uh, uh, girls are getting more involved in gangs now. And it was about a girl in Harlem that she was, um, she was at Deerfield Academy, which is a prestigious school amongst the top schools out there in the US. And her boyfriend was in a gang and she was recruited to hold guns for the gang members and hold a, a transfer. Her boyfriend was in Rikers and I believe that's how they caught her, was they had a conversation they recorded between her and her boyfriend where she'd agreed to transfer a gun for him to his brother. And it was just a really tragic story because she was only 16, a bright future ahead of her, and here she is, she did time in jail. Um, I did read, get an update that she graduated um, high school very recently, and I think she should be in college by now because she got a full scholarship. So she was able to rehabilitate her life, and um, there is a positive outcome of it. I have a not so positive story, another story that I read again in Harlem because there is a lot of gang violence in Harlem. Um, another female, she was a promising basketball. Um, student, she was, I'm not sure what high school she went to, but she played basketball and she was probably on her way to being recruited for the WNBA. And she was also a part of a gang. And I think the role that girls play in gangs is they're the ones that hold the drugs, they're the one that hold the guns because they seem, they're not that obvious person that the cops are going to think, oh, you know, she may have that. And, you know, as a female, you want to feel important, you want to be accepted, you want the guys to like you, you want to be popular. I think that's what everyone shares in societies, we want to feel important. And that might be the type of thing that would want, let like someone that has a promising career to get involved in a gang, but she ended up getting killed. So you have not so positive outcomes of gang violence. So the sooner you can develop what is that special about you, and you know, keep going for that, and you know, not try to get involved in something like a gang. I think the better the outcome will be. We we spoke about this once. <coughs> even if you're associated with people, like you're just hanging out, you know, gangs are part of that too. You can be part of the gang, you don't have to be a main person there, but just being around there. If they get caught up in something, they get pulled in like you, so you get wrapped up with that. I mean, there goes your life right there. You get a record, you know, all these things start happening. So, you know, you have to be really, really careful who you're associated with and what you want out of life. It all comes to, to be a part of it. I, I mean, I'm in Brooklyn now. Um, well, was in Brooklyn, now I'm in Queens. Uh, but as far as, just, I mean, I, I, I'm piggybacking on what, what you all said, basically. I mean, gangs, gangs are definitely a detriment to our community. Uh, you know, and I definitely want, if we talk about gangs, I definitely want to bring up some of the bigger gangs, you know, like police officers, the police force. <laughs> Definitely want to bring that up. Because those gangs have been terrorizing our communities for a long time. And a lot
lot of that, a lot of the games, the smaller games you see with the with the youth and, and young adults, men and women, boys and girls, were initially started to go against those uh, police forces and those individuals that were against people of color living in certain neighborhoods. Um, whether you're talking about California, you're talking about Illinois, I mean Chicago, um, these urban environments where these so-called gangs or some or something called street tribes uh, initially started was to be anti anti harassment against them and to be able to bound together to help to fight those forces that the people that try to marginalize them, terrorize them in their own communities. So fast forward to now, currently, where now the gangs are not protecting their communities, they're terrorizing their own communities and their own uh, community members. So you have a switch in ideology and a switch in perspective of how gangs function and why they function. Uh, uh, Karen, you mentioned as well, I think gang like gangs function because of that lack of, they want to feel important, they want to feel like they belong. It's that familiar family, you're like somebody has my back, somebody has my best interest at heart. So when you lack that in your environment, you lack that in your structure, your family structure, your community structure, games, games in a negative sense begin to exist and begin to grow. And then when you're dealing with societal issues as far as racism, sexism, all those isms, that even perpetuates it even more to say, okay, well, since they, I don't, since I'm not regarded as being valued, and we're not being, we're being regarded as value, and my community doesn't regard me as being as value, and that we don't see any self-worth, it's not my community. I live here, but this is not my community. I feel, I don't feel important. So, me terrorizing or doing certain things in my community is not my community anyway, and I'm, I'm viewed as a criminal anyway, so I might as well, we might as well, you know, follow that ideology. So, there are a lot of different factors that play into it, but for the most part, I, I, with my constituents, my constituents here, my colleagues here, that where gangs mainly exist because there's a lack of something. There's a lack of something. And most of that something is love, respect, you know, trustworthiness, um, and just a, a care for, for oneself and one's, one's family, one's community. So it, it's, it's deep. It's deep. But it's something that can be, that can be, a uh, uh, can be solved. Can be solved, and it's being done in communities in Brooklyn, in Harlem, in Chicago, in LA, in other places that have these that have these things occur. So.